In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood there with Moses and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, if I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in your company. This is indeed a stiff necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and our sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord.
blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned 
because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a remarkable and and unique feast in the church's liturgical year. It's unique because unlike the other great feasts and solemnities of the year, the seasons of the year, Advent, Christmas, Lent, Easter, Ascension, Pentecost. In those feasts and solemnities and seasons, we celebrate what God does for us. His coming, his birth, his, his suffering, his rising, the sending of the Spirit. Here on Trinity Sunday, we praise God, we thank Him, we worship Him, not just for what He has done and what He does, but on Trinity Sunday, we praise Him for what He is. It's a subtle but very important difference. Our belief in God as Trinity, again, just to be clear, is important. It is non-negotiable. Again, I say this with all due respect. uh, It is what marks off the Christian from the heretic. It's it's my advice. It's been my advice all my life and, and will continue to do so if you ever find yourself in a, in a church where the preacher uh, tells you it's not important, disparages the Trinity, or even, God forbid, um, uh, preaches something other than the Trinity. Um, get up, get in your car, and go somewhere else uh, because you're, you're not in a Christian place. John Henry Newman said, it is the ground of the Catholic religion. One of our older, lesser known creeds, the Athanasian Creed, uh, put it more bluntly and urgently, says there at the beginning, it's a very long creed, says there at the very beginning, whosoever shall be saved must hold the Catholic faith, and the Catholic faith is this, we believe in one God, in Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But it, but it is um, a mystery. Uh, as one theologian said, it would be strange if it wasn't mysterious. Some, many, I should say, have thrown up their hands over 2,000 years and uh, suggested that Our belief in the Trinity is just a a, a philosophical uh, grasping at straws, a a conceptual uh, attempt to to tame God. But as Catholics, as as Christians who um, believe Scripture, we know that's not true. Every year on Trinity Sunday, I, 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 I try and preach fundamentally the same thing. Uh, and that's how we Christians uh, began very roughly to, to conceive of God as Trinity. How, how is it that, that we understand God, that we praise God, that we worship God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. First, let's think of of God the Father. 
the core of our religion, the origin of our religion, is the religion of Jesus. And he, of course, was uh, a faithful Jew uh, from Galilee. And as a faithful Jew, he believed in one God. What Deuteronomy says in chapter 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. That's what Jesus believed. God is one. There is one God. All other gods are idols. They're dreams. They're, they're, they're vanities. There is one God. And, and, and not only Jesus believed that, but all his followers. That was not up for grabs. That was not a question. As Paul said, when he visited Corinth for the first time, he walked around the city and said, he goes, I'm impressed. There are, what he said, many gods and many lords. But then he continued, but there's one God. There's one God. That's what Jews and Christians have always believed. The great rabbi martyr Aqaba in the first century is dying words where God is one. Right? Monotheism. But of course, there's the experience of Jesus. Our experience of Jesus, the, 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 the very first followers experience of Jesus, his, his wonders, his, his miracles, what he said and, and what he did, his mercy. What Jesus did and what Jesus said, the earliest followers came to sense, they came to understand. It's godlike what he does. It's godlike what 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 he says, you know. Walks on water. He, he, he heals on the Sabbath day, which, which if you spend five minutes reading the scriptures, you understand how theologically radical that act was and, and also how he explained it. You know, he, in John 5, read John 5, he, he heals the man, you know, with a withered hand and, and he does it on the Sabbath and people get bent out of shape because, he, you know, he's, he's doing a work on, on a day when he shouldn't be doing any work, he should be resting. And they go to him, they say, why are you doing that? And his answer there, my father goes on working and so do I. Because in the Jewish mind, you see, at the time, the only, the only person who goes to work on the Sabbath, rising at the sun, giving birth to animals, creation is still God's work, you see. And the only, the only being that could do any work on the Sabbath day was the Holy One of Israel. And so when they go to Jesus and say, why are you working on the Sabbath day? His answer, his answer is, my father goes on working and so must I. That's why in verse 18 of chapter 5, they start picking up stones to kill him because they knew exactly what he was saying. The same Jesus who a little bit later in John's Gospel said rather blatantly, I and the Father are one. And who said even a little uh, later than that to a disciple the night before he died, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. What happened, you see, is, is, is that when good monotheistic Jews and, and Gentiles came into contact with Jesus, when they began to experience him, when they began to follow him and listen and see, they, 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 they understood that, that, that what you said of the Holy One of Israel, God the Father, you all of a sudden had to say about Jesus, Again, if you read John's Gospel, the Father and the Son, they share all the same verbs. You, you, could, you could write it out on a map. 
what you said about the Holy One of Israel, now you had to say about Jesus. This is why you get in, in, in John chapter 1 in that beautiful prologue, which is just pure theology. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word which became flesh and dwelt among us. This is why we Christians... This is why we Christians believe that Jesus is, is God, right? As, as we'll say in the creed just a minute, consubstantial of the same substance. But of course, we believe in, in the Holy Spirit. And again, it, it, it's straight from the Bible. In John's Gospel, again, it, it is clear that both the Father and the Son give the Spirit. And the Spirit uh, is that in which we are also baptized. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If, if you read Luke in, into Acts of the Apostles, the Holy Spirit acts like a person. He, he, he tells Philip to go talk to the Ethiopian. He talks to Peter. That, that is, the Spirit speaks, just like Jesus speaks, just like God speaks at the baptism of Jesus. Right? And, and so it's this experience of Scripture, or that we see in Scripture and that we experience as readers of Scripture, of the one God, the Father, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Spirit, whom both of them sent. It, it's, that, it's that scriptural revelation, which, you, which it, it's, it's none of its rocket science. You can see why by the second century, theologians used the word trinitas to describe that truth. Trinitas. And so, and so when we say we believe in the Trinity, when, when, when I tell you that it, it's not a, a theological sideshow, but it's actually the most important theological thing of your life and mine, when, when we say the Trinity matters, when the Trinity is important, when the Trinity is real, when it's true, when we say those things, that's what we mean. It's what we understand of God's revelation in Scripture. And that's why we're Trinitarian Christians. Now I get, and I, and I do apologize, all of that's theology um, for an early morning, right? And it might excite people like me and a few others, but it is important. But we can ask the question, why does it matter? Why does believing in God the Trinity matter? How, how, where does rubber meet road? Our belief in the Trinity matters because we can understand that God is close to us because of the Trinity. We can understand how Jesus meant what he said at the end of Matthew's Gospel when he said, I will be with you to the end of the age. Back in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, there was sort of a trendy sort of Christian slogan. I was in high school, I think, when, when it was popular, and so therefore I hated it. It was WWJD, right? What would Jesus do? Which is, you remember that, don't you, Chris? Yeah. Um, what would Jesus do? And I never liked it, and, and here's why. Because it, it, it asked the question in the subjunctive as if Jesus isn't present. What would Jesus do? If, if you have the Catholic faith, 
If you, if you have a biblical Christian faith, you would never ask that question that way. You would never say, what would Jesus do as if he's not here? The proper theological question is, what is Jesus doing? What is Jesus doing? That's, that's the beauty of, of Catholic theology, in my humble opinion, is, is that it allows for no space, no gap between God and us. In, in the sacraments, it says in the catechism, God touches us. In the Bible, I will be with you. Or as Paul said, it's not I who live, but who's, it's Christ who lives in me. We believe in, a, in quote unquote, a personal God. And what, and what that means is God truly, mystically enters into us. We enter into him. We, in the fullness of our experience, become partakers in the divine nature. Again, to quote the Bible. The reason the Trinity is important, the reason it's important to believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is, is because we are biblical Christians and we understand that the Spirit has come down upon us at Pentecost and has not ascended and dwells within us, and we are very, very close to God. Otherwise, Jesus is some historical uh, figure um, half admirable if he is not God. And again, you'll find this if you look at history with a clear eye. It's this solid belief. It's this faith which has made strong monks, mystics, missionaries, and martyrs for 2,000 years. Whether, whether it's Elred of Vivaux in his uh, monastery in medieval England, it's, I'm glad it's not just you and I here, but Christ in between us, which he said at the very first start of his beautiful treatise on friendship. Or Paul saying, it is not I who live, or if it's Dr. King with his mystical experience in his kitchen just after uh, he received a death threat. He heard a voice, stand up for righteousness, stand up for truth. Lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. And so he gets up and then goes out and marches. You know, that's why he did that. Because God, by the power of the Spirit, was very close to that Christian. And so, yes, here we are, Trinity Sunday. A nice theological feast. All these dogmas we like not to think about. But it is the heart and the center of the Christian faith. And it is, and it is what must be central to our faith in order to remain Christians, in order to be of any use to this world, which remains, uh, quite frankly, a world in desperate need of Christians. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. As we worship the Holy Trinity, let us present our needs before the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For the many nations of the world, that the one God in three persons may bring about unity and harmony between them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of abuse, for justice, and for the renewal of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women of the armed forces at home and abroad, for first responders and all who serve us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to consecrated life, ordained ministry, and committed lay ministry within the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are married, that their union will continue to reflect the love that abounds in the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, that they may live in the hope of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our deceased relatives and friends, that they may be heirs of the eternal life of God, especially those whom we remember in this celebration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers offered for all creation in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father and the only begotten Son of God and blessed be the
brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim to and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they are clave. indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your love, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Rita and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Peace, the Lord, be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Sorry. 
Let us pray. May receiving the sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, just a few announcements. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, to those of you who don't, haven't been introduced yet, this is Deacon Mike Lacutus who is a transitional deacon uh, uh, due to be ordained in, to the priesthood in October. Uh, he's with us just for a brief time, mostly through June, uh, before they uh, ship him off to another parish uh, to learn all the wrong things. You know, they learn the right things here at St. Rita. The, you, know, you know, that's a joke. Um, and so welcome. It's good to see you. And if you see him around, not just on YouTube, you'll uh, say hi. Um, all I can say is... Uh, uh, just keep an eye out on our, on our social media platforms and communications because things change and will change over the next uh, several weeks. And so just as we are flexible, we hope you are too. Um, but, but next week, we'll still continue to have our 5.30 Mass open to the public, which will continue to be live streamed. We still will uh, have adoration in the commons from 9 to noon, uh, and the office remains closed, although you can do business uh, simply by calling, uh, but uh, we miss you and we'll see you soon when, whenever we safely open up. Um, also, lastly, next Sunday evening at 7 p.m., uh, we are going to, for the next Sunday's uh, Corpus Christi, as many of you know, uh, and uh, instead of a procession, we normally have a procession around campus, uh, but that's not wise this year. 
we are going to have solemn vespers, um, which uh, we're going to work on. should be very beautiful. Uh, and that will be next Sunday, uh, uh, the 14th, uh, at 7 p.m. And so all the media will be uh, on, online about that. And uh, it'll be here in the church and, and open to the public. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.